All right, today we're talking about how to take our API that we've built and expand it to allow for editing and deleting. Okay, last time we talked about how to utilize access tokens and how to verify users in the system. This time what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that access token and the previous functions we've written around reading and writing data. And now we're gonna allow a user with a specific access token to edit and delete their data. Okay, so to get started, let's uh, expand our functions that we're able to utilize. So at the moment, the, the core of the function is we're obtaining the connection to the MySQL server, we're then checking if they have access to utilize this service. If they have access, then we're incrementing the service and assuming that they still have usage left, we're then looking at what request type are they actually sending through. So at the moment we have the ability to read the insert function and the get info function. So we're gonna add in two additional functions here, uh, which will be for edit info and also delete info. And so these requests, as their name suggests, will allow us to edit the data and delete the data. So we need to go through and now write functions uh, for each of these pieces specifically. Okay, so now let's get started in writing the actual functions. And we're gonna start with the edit side. So first off, we need to declare a function, edit the data with the connection variable so that we can connect to the MySQL database. And what we're effectively doing here in this really primitive version of an API is looking for that ID in the database, making sure it actually exists. And if it does, then going through and making sure that information is being provided that needs to be updated. So let's actually just take really the read the data function because that's gonna use primarily a lot of the same functionality. So we're gonna be getting the ID from the request we're going to be running a, a uh, running a MySQL query to check, hey, does this entry actually exist? Get the results back. If it fails to find any results, then they're trying to edit a, a piece of data that just doesn't exist. So we're going to say it failed to select any data from the MySQL table. Otherwise, if it did, then instead of echoing out the data, what we actually need to go through then is go through and generate an actual MySQL statement to update the information. So within the actual API information at the moment, as we can see, we've got primarily a post title and some post information. And so what we need to do is we need to go through and make sure, hey, has this person actually supplied this data? Now this will come down to specifically how you want your system to work. Uh, but for now, we're just going to assume that the person has to provide a new title and a new piece of post information for this to work. So what we need to do is we need to, again, get the data and this sort of comes into line then with the insert the data process. So we need to get these pieces of information from, from the uh, request. And we're gonna say if the post title isn't empty and also the post information isn't empty, then we're good to run a query. So if either of those variables in this case come through as empty values, uh, then we're going to just not run this uh, MySQL query. So we've got an ID, we've got an entry that we know exists, we've got the post title, the post information that we need. So now what we need to do is actually create the MySQL query and then run it as well. So we're going to just copy this one up here because it's going to make it a little bit easier. Indent it in. And what we need to do is we need to actually run a instead of an insert this time, we're trying to run an update query. So we need to update the API information uh, table. And what we need to do is we need to set the post title field to equal the post title variable that we've set. And we also want the post information to equal the post information that we've sent through. And so we can clear the rest of that. And so with these two being set, we also need to say, hey, for which row is this being set? So we need to say where the ID equals the I, the, sorry, where the ID equals the result 
ID and we're going to escape that out because it's a little bit dirty like that so we go dot dot and so then this is now going to run an update query setting the post title to equal the post title variable that we've obtained here and the post information to equal the post information that was set here and so then we're basically going through we're running that query and we're saying if it fails to run we're saying it failed to update update data to the MySQL table and that is the function in a whole. Now taking the edit function just slightly a little bit further so that we've got a little bit more clarity on what's happening in the database. What we're going to actually do is we're going to slightly change the database. So if I jump across here to our database, I've got this one row here, which is the ID one, hello world, this is my information with the creation date. What we're going to do is we're actually going to now add in another field called the modified date. And the modified date for us is going to allow us to basically know, hey, when was this actually last modified? So we've got when it was first created, but now we're going to have when it was last modified so that we can know how often this has been utilized. This isn't really heavily required. Like if you want to skip this, you absolutely could, but it just, it makes uh, logging and it makes tracking back what, what has happened in your system a little bit easier. Uh, so we're going to slightly change our function on the edit here to also include uh, a modified date, just like we created a creation date here. We now want to set up a modified date. So I'm going to set that up the top here. And we'll go modified date. And we want to then set this within the MySQL query itself. So we've got that and then we want also the modified date equals the modified date. Now we also need to do that for the insert function. So we have, uh, we have not done that yet. So let me jump across to Sublime now. So in our edit function here, we've jumped in, we've added the modified date in with the YMD minute, hour, minute, second. And inside the, inside the actual update function here, we've got update equals blah, blah, blah. And then also modified date equals modified date. So because we've included that here, we also need to insert that on the original insertion. So we've got the creation date and we also want to add in the modified date. And that's actually just going to be the same date as creation date when first inserted because it hasn't been modified before that state. So now whenever we edit the func whenever we edit the data, we're going in, we're finding the row that it relates to. If it's there, we're going to see if there's post title, post information. And if those are both not empty, we're going to update all that information along with the modified, da modified date. And if that all fails for some reason, we'll get a quick, we'll get a uh, answer to why that hurt, occurred. Anyway, let me jump into, let me put the passwords in and let's jump in and do a quick example. Okay, so now we're jumping on the front end and let's just go through a quick example here. So we've got request type equals get info, ID of one, access token one. And that's showing us the information as we'd expect. Uh, if we went to, uh, well, let's go to get info and with an ID of two and that doesn't exist so it's not showing any information but if we tried to do edit info and the access type uh, and the ID was two it's basically failing to select from the MySQL database because it just doesn't exist so what we're going to do is we're going to go edit info ID equals one and it's returning blank because we haven't provided any information uh, we haven't provided any post title or any post information so let's go ahead and add some in so the post title we're going to go with uh, hello Hello world two, and the post information we're going to go with this is some um, content. So hit go, and it doesn't show any message, and that's because we had no like on success provide a return true or anything like that back to the screen. But if we jump into the database here and we hit refresh, we had hello world. This is my information. And now we have Hello World 2, this is some content, and the modified date is updated to today. So there you have it, we have the edit function now running. Now it, it is worth noting that this is a very primitive edit function in that the only sort of validation that we have around if the user can edit this is if they have an access token to the system. The ultimate sort of ideal 
um, in a lot of cases is that um, the post itself is related to a user and that only that user can edit or delete the information. Uh, in that sort of case, you would need to start having um, access tokens associated to each, uh, to each post uh, API information itself. Um, there's a lot of different solutions that could be utilized there. But this is just to bear in mind that this is a global system that anyone can edit, add, delete any information from the system. Okay, so now that we've got the edit function all running, all working, let's jump in and do the delete function. Now I'm going to tell you, it's almost identical to the edit function, just slight differences here. So I'm actually just going to copy this function in whole and we're going to rename it to be delete the data. Apologies. Uh, in this, we just need to request the ID. We need to make sure that it actually exists. Uh, if it fails to find any information, then we want to tell the user that it's failed. And then in the for each process here, we don't need to have this validation of um, is this information set because we're not updating anything, we're just deleting here. So it really is as simple as does that result exist in the database? And if it does, jump in and delete it. So in here, within the for each, we're now just going to replace this MySQL statement with delete, my apologies, delete from API information where the I, where the ID equals this current rows ID from the database. And if, uh, if it doesn't fail to run the query for some reason, then we're going to say fail to delete data from MySQL data. And honestly, that's as simple as the function gets. It's, it's really not a super complex one. Again, more validation could be put in state in regards to does this user actually have access to do this from a, do they own the post and that sort of style of piece. But in our example here, global functions. So let's now jump in and well, let me get the password back in and let's jump and do a quick test run. Okay, so we're on the front end now. We have the information, the ID of one. We run the get info. We can see the hello world two. This is some content that we received out of the database because we just edited that information before. And, uh, and just to confirm in the database here, we can see that entry there as well. So then if we change this from get info to delete info, again, we have no on success message at the moment. But if we go to database, we hit refresh, we now have no entries in there. And so if we try to get inf any information at the moment, it just doesn't exist because there is literally nothing in there. And so that is really the basics to deleting from uh, via an API calls. And so that's it guys. We've gone through, we figured out the edit, delete functions. Guys, if you have any ideas on how you want to tailor this further, well, please let me know in the comments. Of course, there are so many different ways to handle the editing and deleting functions, and maybe we'll get into user accounts so that it's really, it's only allowing for those specific users. But otherwise, next time I'm gonna move into probably more around API responses and the actual status codes and things like that, rather than just echoing out data.